Randon Montalvo was sitting in a pretty good spot on Survivor 46. He was on a tribe that came in first place in every single challenge. He had an advantage in the game. He had an ally that desperately needed him in Venus Vafa. And he had bigger personalities around to hog the spotlight and keep his threat level way down. Unfortunately, at some point, Randon needed to sleep, and that ultimately took him out of the game. Randon complained about waking up with prickly sensations in his arm and leg, and eventually his right hand and wrist became numb, and he was unable to grip anything. The show's doctor examined Randon, and at first believed it to be lower pinched nerve that they would have to keep an eye on. However, after consulting with other medical professionals, Dr. Will became concerned about the possibility that the signs could be due to a much more dangerous bulging disc in the neck area pushing on the nerve. The only way to know for sure would be to get an MRI, and to get an MRI, Randon would have to be pulled from the game, which is exactly what happened. So what went down after Randon walked off the beach? What was the end result diagnosis? And how has he dealt with being medically evacuated out of the game? We asked the third one out of Survivor 46 all that and more. When did you first notice you were having an issue? Randon Montalvo, it was the night before what you see on camera. That night we had a really bad storm and I was having a huge problem sleeping. I was delusional. The storm just wrecked us in general. So that night itself, I was struggling to get some sleep. And during that moment, I woke up and I realized that when I was sleeping I felt a very sharp pain behind my neck. And it was like a lightning bolt. And I remember seeing everything very blurry. And then I thought it would go away. And when I woke up, I had no feeling in my arm and I had a massive headache throughout the night. It felt like the biggest migraine ever. But when you're playing the game, I was like, I don't want to show weakness. I don't want to tell people I'm having a problem right now because I was just so determined. But it was the night before what you saw on camera.so when you saw Jeff Probst walking up your beach. What were you thinking? I'm devastated. I'm so mad. You know what this funny thing is, is that I'm mad that I disappointed my tribe more than myself. I was mad at that point. And here's the reason why. Because I knew that we were going to make merge because we kept on winning. The odds are very good for me. I was like, I'm going to make merge. This is what I've always wanted. I see this man come up on a boat with his cargo shorts and I am heated because there's only one person with a problem and it's me. And I knew it. I was telling everybody, be strong, be strong, be strong. And it was devastating. It was probably a moment I will never forget, but I tried to be as strong as possible. I knew that my kids and everybody was watching. But if you watch that scene, I mean, that was an exercise in a lot of self-control. That's all I can say. Anything else we didn't see in regards to how that all went down? Well, the only thing I could say is that when I was saying bye to everybody, as I'm hugging them, I gave everybody a unique message that was how I felt about them in that moment about their game. You do see me hugging, but it doesn't show the audio. I said to each and every one of them how I felt about them in the game. And that was 100% genuine. That was not game. That was just how I felt about the person. And it was all genuinely good. I understand that we're all kind of not our genuine selves at some point, but that's something that I cherished in that moment. Did you think at all about trying to slip Venus your advantage? Because probes told me that you could have done that at any point until the words actually came out that you were being pulled? Okay, so this is very hard to understand. Because what happened was, I had told Venus that, Hey, I know my time is up. I feel it. I could see what's happening. You get to feel the ambience. So I asked her, do you want it? She said yes. I said, then I have to get to my coat. It's in my coat. We have to get there. But for some reason in the universe, I could not get to my blazer, and she can't go get it. I have to give it to her. I was trying my hardest, but I didn't know that I could have done it up until that point. I would have done it in secret. I would have done it when I would have said bye to her. I would have done one of these, mimics secretly transferring an advantage in a handshake. I would have never done it blatantly. So that was the goal, but I did want to give it to her. It didn't happen. There was a lot of variables. By the time he came on the beach, it was not very clear to me how I was going to be able to do that in that moment. It was very intense. Take us through what happened after you left the beach. A very intense boat ride and a very intense self-reflection of my whole game. I was very disappointed. I was cursing a lot about myself because I felt like I'd rather have gotten voted out than get medevaced. I was like, vote me out, man. I don't want to be a medevac. I just didn't want to do that. But I was scared when they told me about the spine. Because when I got on the show, the first thing I said is, I don't want to get poisoned and I don't want to get paralyzed. Because I'm a risk taker and they were going to have to drag me out of the game. I would have done anything I could to maintain my status in the game. 
Were you surprised that Venus of all people seemed to become your biggest ally in the game? Let me tell you something. She has an army on social media that is no joke. So I'm glad I'm on the good graces of that army now. But anyway, in the game of Survivor, sometimes it's better to know your enemy than not to. And at the beginning of the game, we were both very alike in what we were trying to do. And people that are alike tend to rub each other the wrong way sometimes. And that's where we were. We were on the outs and were kind of alike, coincidentally. So we didn't agree on everything because I'm like, my strategy is the same as yours, but I want Soda out, and I want this person out, but you want this person out. And it was just really chaotic. But what changed me is we kept on talking, started developing a bond. And I was like, okay, this can work if we have a general consensus of what we want to get out of each other. But I felt like we had an understanding of each other up until that point. And it was worthwhile to diversify my island portfolio. I was good on this side with Tevin and Hunter, and Liz was kind of along for that ride. And then I was good with Venus just in case we made merch. I would have both outlets, because nobody was solid on the Hunter and Tevin side that I was in with them. They were like, oh yeah, we cool with you, but I didn't get the confirmation, and Venus was like, I'll work with you. And I needed that dependency because Soda already failed me in the first episode by not keeping my troll with the Parvati line. Anything that didn't make it to an episode that you wish we got a chance to see? I would just tell you in episode 1, you see me say bring up Parvati, right? And I did message her and I gave her context. I said, sorry for invoking the name of one of the goats. But it was troll. I needed to test Soda because Soda was selling real estate to everybody. I wanted to work with Soda first. That was my instinct coming off the boat. She reminds me of a family member of mine and I had to give a test. What was it like watching it all play back on TV last night? Brutal. I've never seen myself crying and emotional, and neither has anybody who knows me, actually. So it was really hard for me. My social media right now is insane. I've made a couple of posts, but there are so many people giving me love and showing me love, and it's impactful. Survivor's a powerful brand. I've got people all over the world telling me, we want you in the game. If they brought back Bruce, they'll bring back you. Everybody's story is different. It's been a very humbling experience, and I'm trying to take it all with stride. Watching yourself break down mentally and physically is one of the most humbling things you can watch while you're still wanting to be competitive. So it was surreal, but I'm appreciative of CBS and Survivor.